the Kenyan markets have fared today. Looking at the NSC today, up more than a half of a percent, 5,017 points is where we are today. Looking on the currency front and seeing how the shilling has fared today, 85.35 is where we are. But right now we are joined from our studios in Nairobi to get an update on what the markets in Kenya are doing. We have Silha Rasugu, who's the research analyst at Genghis Capital. Uh, Sila, thank you so much for making the time to join us today. Can you quickly give us an overview of how the markets have performed today? Have you seen any specific standout stocks? Uh, yes, the, mar the market has performed quite well today. It's past the 5,000 point for the NSC 20 share index, which, which is the mark we've been waiting for uh, for quite a, a few weeks now. Uh, some of the stocks that have stood out today is Kenya Airways. It was a top gainer in today's trading, um, closing at around 12.3 shillings per share. And this may be attributable to uh, anticipated half-year results, which, might be, which should be improved compared to last year. Uh, Silo, you see the 5,000 markers you've mentioned, quite exciting. Uh, how much higher do you think uh, it can go and is this sustainable? Uh, yes, I think it's sustainable in the short term, considering the quarter three results coming in are quite bullish. Uh, we've seen counters like Safaricom register huge growth. Uh, they've been KCB and Equity Bank, both and Housing Finance, all having improved earnings. And this is a sign that the environment is good for businesses, especially listed companies. And so investors will be confident enough to put more money into the market and this should push the market further higher. Uh, we should see it moving on up for at least the next few weeks uh, to December, early December. Now, speaking about uh, third quarter results that have come through, we had the National Bank of Kenya that has, where their profit has uh, you know, almost doubled to 1.3 billion uh, shillings. I mean, they're up 119% year on year. This is quite a remarkable increase. What do you think drove this? Uh, the, the, the key factors we're looking at in terms of national bank is their cost to income ratio, which last year was quite high at over 70%. So they've taken steps to reduce these costs. Uh, they've been restructuring. Uh, they've employed the services of McKinsey consultants. Uh, they've in, in, integrated ICT into their, in, into their banking halls and also frozen hiring. And so maintaining the costs helps them improve their margins going forward. And of course, the banking sector has enjoyed good spreads in terms of the lending rate compared to the deposit rates. And so the growth is expected and it, they've, they've done well considering where they're coming from and the competition in the industry as a whole. And this, this, it's, a, it's a brilliant performance by the company. Uh, it, it shows that their strategy going forward is viable and it will work in their benefit. Mm. And looking at, you know, at those results, where else would you say in the company where you're seeing opportunity for it to grow further? I, yes, there is opportunity for National Bank to grow further. I think the, the restructuring process is still in the in initial stages. And so if they progress in that direction with the, good, with the new leadership they have, uh, and, and, and the plans they have to implement. Uh, you don't want to change the banking hall to be very um, technology-based, and so they'll require less staff. As I mentioned before, they've frozen hiring of new staff, and so if they can bring their costs down, they'll be able to compete better. And of course, uh, they plan to diversify into almost all, not almost all the counties, all the 47 counties, and so oh, with such a uh, diverse network and minimal costs, they will be improved going forward. It's, it is sustainable. Mm. Let's uh, talk about you know, other, other points uh, with regards to those results because they're saying that they're implementing a five-year transformation program and what they're targeting is to become a top-tier uh, status by 2017. You've been optimistic uh, thus far saying that it is sustainable. So are you of the opinion that they could reach uh, that by that time? Uh, they, they could reach. Uh, as I said, uh, the, the banking or other financial sector is quite competitive, uh, so it won't be immediate, it won't be in the short term, but with a viable strategy and commitment to it, the, it, it is possible to make it to the top tier of banks. They also really need to uh, uh, increase their the, the, the loans, their loan book. They need to grow their loan book compared to top tier banks like Equity and KCB, they're still far, far back. 
in terms of uh, loans disbursed. Mm. Let's look at it. Though, let's look at the broader uh, banking sector because we had the uh, Treasury Cabinet Secretary uh, Harry Rochis come down on some of the banks and saying that you know when it comes to those spreads, we're not seeing a lot of uh, you know cost containment. We're seeing that the National Bank uh, has been able to do that. Looking at other banks, are you seeing that you know they are uh, starting to c come to to the table and do cost cutting measures or not? so much? Well, uh, a few banks have, have taken the step in the right direction. Equity Bank, when they released the, half, uh, the quarter three results, mentioned that they have uh, investing heavily in, the, in an ICT platform that should be ready by the first quarter, quarter of 2014. And so their overheads really uh, eat into their margins, and that's why they can't really reduce their lending rates. And so a few banks have taken that uh, step already, and I'm sure the rest will follow suit because with the competition, you really have to be uh, uh, considerate of your market players, of other market players, see what they're doing and see how you can improve your operations in terms into that. Let's talk, about an, let's talk about another stock that's been, you know, been spoken about quite a lot this week, is Safaricom, uh, yesterday after rallying, after that stellar performance. Uh, but, you know, do you see any downside risk? Because a lot, of the, uh, the lot of appetite has come from foreign investors. And given that we are going to be seeing the eventual uh, tapering of quantitative easing, uh, what type of impact do you think it would have on the stock, if at all? Uh, yes, the, the, the tapering measures, I think, is a, is a major risk for Safaricom right now. As you said, the, the share price has been buoyed by foreign investors. They are very interested in the counter, clearly, because of their cash. Their cash then is, it's a liquid company with steady growth. And so if, if they do, uh, if, the, if the amount of money, or rather the liquidity of foreigners, is to be reduced, then the share price will take a hit with the reduced demand, and locals will then sell off, and it will have downward pressure on the share price. However, I don't see this as an immediate risk uh, right now. Uh, the tapering off uh, as, as has, been, uh, has been said to be pushed forward to at least next year. I don't see it happening in December. So the share price is sustainable, although it's trading at a PE that's above market levels, which is around 16 right now for the NSC. But as a growth company, it's, 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 not, just, it's not sustainable, but it's justified right now as a, uh, according to the company performance. It should be sustainable in the short term.